Today we're talking about five steps to becoming an INFJ phoenix who rises from the ashes. As an INFJ, we've experienced really low lows in our life, but we've also learned how to get out of them. And once you understand how this works, once you understand that every failure is actually an opportunity to rise even higher, then you get into this dynamic of knowing that no matter what comes your way, you're going to actually excel because of that. And then this entire dynamic changes incredibly. So if you're really now in this deep black hole right now, or if you're at some kind of little dip into your life, remember you can become this INFJ Phoenix really, really quickly. And today we're going to talk about five steps to becoming this INFJ Phoenix and how you can use all of those skills for your everyday life. So you keep improving and you see that every failure is just another stepping stone and it's not something that hurts you at all. It's actually one more sign that you're excelling to the next level because you know, oh, I survived this as well. And I'm going to learn my lessons from it because this is what INFJs are so good at. And then when I excel to the next level, I'm not going to make the same mistakes I made before. I'm actually going to be able to expand my exponential curve and get to where I want to go even quicker. Before we get started, I want to remind you, if you haven't done this so far, to download the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life Formula. And if you want to take it to the next level and say, I'm going to get my life started right now into the direction that I want, my INFJ Epic Life is waiting for me, then get the INFJ Epic Life audio guide today. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. Step number one, face judgment head on. Every person is afraid of judgment but INFJs are very strong mentally. That's something that we have to be aware of and it's something that you know about yourself if you really think about it. In how many situations have you been where you felt like, okay, if this would have happened to somebody else, they wouldn't have been able to handle it the way I did. We have the capacity to really get ourselves out of really dark faces, you know, situations, and because of that, we actually get pulled down there very often because we don't feel like we deserve better, right? It's like, I have all of this power, so I'm going to use it to help everybody around me and I can still keep my head above water. But it's time that we switch from survival mode to thriving mode. And so in order to do that, we have to know that although judgment is uncomfortable, we can handle it. We've handled more traumatic events in our life and you know emotions that we had to deal with. And we're going to be able to handle this as well. Because facing judgment actually means that you're facing judgments you have about yourself. Because if somebody came up to you and said, oh, I don't like the fact that you wear blue jeans, you wouldn't care. Because this is not something that you judge yourself for. But if somebody would say, oh, you're a bad person, you were selfish in this and this situation, and these were also thoughts that crossed your mind at some point, that's when you're going to feel bad. If you think people are going to say you're weird or who do you think you are, it's because you have those fears about yourself. And the thing is this, in order to be able to go and excel in life, in order to be able to get to the next level, we have to peel away these layers of judgment that we have about ourselves. And the best way to do that, the quickest way to do that, is to actually face those judgments, to feel them. Because once you feel something, you can heal it. For a lot of people, that seems impossible because the emotional toll it has on you is intense. But guess what? You know, it's a hard thing, but you can do hard things. And I always say we want to get ourselves to a place where it gets us out of our comfort zone, but it doesn't overwhelm us. It doesn't mean that you have to face all your judgments about yourself like right tomorrow, but really face judgment head on. You know, set up that YouTube channel, you know, speak something openly you know, go into situations and be vocal about what is important to you. Again, remember, we're talking about getting out of our comfort zone, but not being in a place where it overwhelms us. You can handle this. Otherwise, you wouldn't have those ideas about what to do next. They might scare you, but you can do this. And I promise you, the more often you take on those judgments, the more often you face them head on, the easier it's going to get, the less they're going to bother you, the more it will become just like this little, you know, whisper that you hear in the back of your mind. And the more you do this, the quieter these voices are going to become 
because in the end, you know, creating that life that you always wanted isn't that hard. What is hard is, you know, getting our mindset to a place where we actually do the things that will make a difference in our life. And you got what it takes. Step number two, setting outrageous goals. So I very often talk about that we wanna win the day, we wanna win the week, and that means that we set small goals. But small goals in the sense of what is my next step in order to reach my long-term big goal? What is my vision? We as INFGs, we have those visions all the time. It just seems that's too outrageous. I can't wish for that. I can't really get that. I can't create like some product that will revolutionize, you know, humanity humanity, whatever it may be. The point is that we all have ideas, we all have visions of what we could achieve, who we can become, but it seems like nobody around us has those visions and therefore it feels like we're dreaming too big, but you're not. If you want to get to a place where you rise from the ashes, if you want to become that INFJ Phoenix, you have to set goals for yourself that up until this point seemed like they're too big to actually wish for. This is not about wishing. This is about setting that goal and then taking the steps towards that because it's so much more important to be on that trajectory towards that goal than to have actually achieved that. That's going to happen down the road. It's going to happen anyway once you're on that trajectory and you know this is who you want to be. This is who you're becoming. Like you don't feel good about yourself if you're not taking steps towards the person you want to be. And trust me, for INFJs, once they're in this you know, mindset, there's nothing that's going to hold us back. So please set those outrageous goals, go for them and know that the moment you start going towards them, you have already won. It's not about having achieved that. That's going to happen as a byproduct. It's about saying to yourself, I am fighting for myself. I am choosing myself. And that in itself is already a thing that's going to push me forward. Because worst case scenario, things don't work out, which I don't believe can happen anyway, because you know you can always pivot. But let's say you have doubts about like being able to achieve whatever you want to. If you focus on saying, I didn't give up on myself. If things work out or not, you know, there are things that are outside of my control. But, you know, if they don't get it, it's on them. But if I don't bring it, it's on me. What can I do in order to push myself forward? And if you're doing that, then you can be happy with yourself. You can be satisfied. You know, you won in that aspect. And if you know that you've done everything you can with what you have right now, with the strength you have right now, with the motivation you have now, if you've done everything you can right now to go towards that outrageous goal of yours, I promise you, you're going to feel amazing. Step number three, and this is very much leaning into step number two. So step number two is all about setting those goals. And step number three is about focusing on who you're becoming. So in the process of going towards that goal, you're becoming somebody who's actively working towards their goals. You're becoming somebody who values who they are. You're becoming somebody who likes growing. Because like before I actually started this concept, I didn't think this was possible. I thought, you know, there are people who go towards their goals and then there's me. And once I started looking into INFJs and MBTI, it seemed like, oh, you know, that's just who I am and that's how we all are as INFJs. You should have seen the text and the descriptions written about INFJs 10 years ago. It was all about, yeah, I'm different. I'm, you know, a snowflake. But in the end of the day, you know, I'm never going to achieve anything. I'm more of an observer. I only live in my head. And this is such a limited view on what an INFJ can do and wants to do. And yes, going towards your goals, achieving amazing things on your terms, you know, will look differently than it looks for other types. But that doesn't mean that you have to settle with a life that doesn't excite you. Not at all. So it's time about focusing on becoming the person you want to be and the person that you like, where you would look at that person from the outside and say, that's a cool person. That's a person who does, you know, exciting things. That's somebody who aims to experience life fully. And again, it's on your terms. It's not how other people perceive it. So that doesn't mean that you have to go bungee jumping and go on vacations every weekend and do whatever other people think is necessary or buy like some expensive things that you don't care about. It's about knowing that you're turning into a person that you yourself have admiration for. Step number four, make others look bad. 
please hear me out on this because this statement in itself is already something that makes every INFJ feel uncomfortable and it makes them feel bad. It's not about going out of your way and telling another person, look, everything that I've achieved, everything that I'm doing, you know, and I want to tell you these things so I feel superior to you. That's not what we're talking about. But the truth is this, we as INFJs dim our light so often because of how we will make other people feel. It's okay to make moves in silence. It's something that we're going to do anyway. But we should also ask ourselves, am I holding myself back? Am I keeping my energy low? Am I not exuding the excitement I could actually have for my life because of the fear of how other people are going to feel, how other people are going to feel about me, and that I will make them feel bad about the fact that I'm going after my dreams and they're not. This is how we feel. That's not the truth though. This is something that is very subjective in that moment of time. So we have to push ourselves. We have to be able to be proud of who we're becoming. We have to be able to exude the energy that we feel about life and not be afraid that our excitement will make others feel bad. Yes, it might make them feel bad, but that's not your decision to make. This is not for you to decide. This is not the power that you hold. If you think it's on you making that other person feel bad, then you're giving yourself too much power. Recognize that if you go after your dreams and this makes somebody else feel bad, then they made themselves feel bad. They look at that and they see that they want to have that too. But they make those decisions. They have those feelings. You don't hold the power over that. It's like saying, oh, I don't want to breathe because, you know, I'm reminding another person that they're not breathing themselves. What you're actually doing is telling them, breathe, breathe, and I can do it so you can do it too. But in order for us to get to this place, we have to be willing to, you know, face all of those fears that we have ourselves. And we've told ourselves that this is our power, that we hold the power over how people are feeling around us. And that's not the case. You have the prerogative to be the best version of yourself. You're not going out of your way to hurt others if you are just not hiding your accomplishments, if you're not hiding your progress, if you're not hiding your joy for life. That's who you're meant to be. And everybody else can either get inspired or will move away from you because their ego cannot handle it. But that's on them. This has nothing to do with you. Because if you're not a reflection of what makes them feel bad, somebody else will be. And again, this is not of, oh, if I don't steal this, somebody else will steal it. This is your light, not theirs. You are tapping into your light. You're not taking anything away from anybody else. And once you embrace that, that's when you really make big steps when it comes to rising from the ashes because then you recognize all the power that you hold and then you start looking at it from the perspective of, I'm so full of joy for life, I will be an inspiration for others to go after their dreams as well. And step number five to becoming an INFJ Phoenix, create a fighter soundtrack for your life. We as INFJs are very impressionable. And with all the aspects that we mentioned so far, adding a soundtrack on top of that, and it doesn't actually only have to be music, it can just be a theme of feeling about your life. It will give you the necessary motivation and push to continue because you like how it feels. This isn't just great on paper, it's a feeling. And you know how it is for us. If we're around somebody, we absorb their taste of music. If we're around somebody, else we absorb their way of looking at life you know there's so much we can pick up so use that to your advantage you know put those fighter songs on when you go to work listen to music look at movies you know people who actually have done it who've gone from a situation where they didn't want to be to somewhere where they felt victorious use this feeling not only as an inspiration but as a feeling that you're going to take with you. And once you create the soundtrack for your life, it will get that much more exciting. It will be that much more of an easy step to want to move forward. You know, the steps to take ourselves from the ashes, you know, and rise like a phoenix in the end aren't that difficult. 
they're difficult from a mindset standpoint. This is a hard endeavor because of the mindset you're in once you're really low. If you felt amazingly, you know, this wouldn't even be a journey, but turning into a person who's excited about life, who's happy with who they're becoming, this journey is incredibly exciting, specifically for INFJs. So use as much help as you possibly can through music, through motivational videos, through just themes that you take with you. Remember, if you want some more guidelines how to build up that INFJ Epic Life on your terms, then check out the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life formula. And if you want to take it to the next level, then get the INFJ Epic Life audio guide today. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video when the INFJ finally accepts their mind-blowing nature. This is what happens.